Hi guys, in the previous episode, we told you in detail about the thing that will set the car in motion. In the end, we have a sandwich made from Nissan Leaf, Mercedes gearbox and the adapter plate and it looks like this. Now we just need to assemble it and put it in the car. The flywheel turned out to be the main problem. In the end, we ordered a few of them, using the number of the piece and we found the one that fits only on our third attempt. Ok, here's our flywheel. I hope it's gonna fit this time. We're gonna try it now. There was a lot of criticism and questions about the automatic gearbox. To be fair, we should say that there were useful comments with constructive criticism. We're gonna explore this topic and answer all the questions in the next video, when we're gonna power up the engine and the car will be basically in working order. Meanwhile, Nick welded the adapter plate and brought the whole thing to fit it on the van. The next stage is to make underframe, on which we're gonna install the gearbox and the engine. We're installing the base underframe on the van's frame. We made a set of plates. The big plate will be installed on the underframe. The reciprocal plate will be on the other side of the frame. These plates will connect these two plates inside, creating a box and two plugs, so that when we tighten the bolts, the frame won't collapse. Meanwhile, Nick is bending one pipe after another. Let me explain a little bit the way we are doing our job. We have a lot of people in our team. Each person is doing their part. Some progress faster than others. Trust me, if Alexi is working on the footboard lighting, it doesn't mean that Nick stop welding the underframe. Using a simple analogy and proceeding from this logic, a crane operator has to wait for the house painter to hand wallpaper, and only then he can proceed to the next building. Show more kindness, try to see the full picture first. It's already dark, so another Nick day has passed. In the end we have the structure, on which we're gonna install the engine and the gearbox. Of course, they have to be installed in the engine mounts. Basically, Nick is welding the slots for them right now. Yeah, there were a lot of comments saying that our van won't be able to go off-road and that it doesn't look like the Volkswagen transported at all. In the previous video, I mentioned that the police won't allow us to drive it on the normal roads anyway. And this is just a fun project, that allows us to implement a lot of unusual ideas. Just because it's fun, just because we want to. The van is gonna be fully functional, but we will be able to drive it only at auto shows. So it's like a concept car. They call it a showstopper, you know. The engine will be installed in two points and we need three mounts accordingly. We have simple, cheap mounts from off-road car. It was a bit more expensive and complicated with the gearbox. We had to buy the original Mercedes mount because we have a Mercedes gearbox. Finally, the first fitting. To give the thing a chance to move, the next stage will be connecting the gearbox with the axle, via a U-joint, of course. In the end, we bought an original Mercedes U-joint. But of course, it's length, and the lens of the axle don't match. That's why Nick ruthlessly cuts it and sends it to the specialized workshop. We send the U-joint to the guys in specialized workshop to where they balance it properly. And now we have time to experiment on the wheel arch and size. We don't think this size is great. 
it seems too small. And for a van that big, these tiny rubber ties look pathetic. That's why we bought a set of bigger ties. And since they are much bigger, we have to redo the arch completely. But before redoing the arch, we need to put the new tires in the rest of the wheels. First of all, we disassembled the semi-custom wheels completely. As you can see, they consist of three parts and connected with a lot of bolts. I can't remember the exact number. And since there are three parts, we need to completely remove grease from the connecting weld. Because after assembling, three out of four wheels became less airproof than before. Hi, Andrew. After assembling the sandwich and hopefully making it airproof, we're going to the tire shop. There were also many questions about why we started working on the footboards, if we didn't even finish the body yet. If you look closer, you can see that the footboards are kind of part of the body, since the main heavy hinges were welded to the frame. And we need to do all the welding at this point. Yeah, we could have done without the lights, of course. But then we would get other questions like, why would you start making the footboards and not finish it? On the contrary, we showed you what it should look like. In the end, they helped us put the tires on the wheels, but they failed to pump them up. I remind you that these are the giant 20 second wheels, and it's harder than it seems. But a little explosion solved that issue right away. To make four identical arches, we create a simple improvised slide gauge. A makeshift caliper, so to say. The outer diameter is identical to the outer diameter of the wheel. We installed a simple pin with a few nuts and it's gonna draw us a new arch. This way we're gonna make four identical arches. Many of you may say that we should create a precise 3D model and follow it. Then we wouldn't need to redo the arches all over. And of course you're right. Unfortunately, we didn't have an opportunity to do that. This is our first project. And when we started doing it, we had a choice. Starting doing something and figure it out on the go, or don't start anything and wait for the perfect conditions. That is to wait for the time that will never come. That's why we redo all the parts. We have to do it. Once again, we're not making a tutorial. This is just a fun thing to do in our workshop. We're just having fun. And while we're having fun, Nick is doing all the work. After one new day, here's what we've got. Speaking about the performed works, in order to install the bigger wheels, we change the arches. We increase its diameter. To do this, we cut out the old one. We place our gauge here. We make the new size, roll the new arch frame through the pipe rolling machine. We measured it, we placed it, we welded it. We had to redo the door too, so that it doesn't overlap the arch. We also put the third hinge, to avoid sagging due to the weight. Now it works as intended and it looks much better. It's okay to make mistakes, even if it's about a body ratio, the shape of the arches. 
or the fact that we decided to attach an electric engine with the automatic gearbox. If anything goes wrong, we can fix that. We are not an engineering bureau. We are not filming tutorials on how to make your own vehicles. We come up with the fun ideas and implement them, making concept cars, so to say. If this inspires someone to get their ass off the coach, we'll be very happy. So friends, it's time to headline our van, we're gonna line its contour. We're gonna make these parts out of fiberglass, but we're not gonna make the whole contour out of fiberglass. We're gonna do only a few elements out of fiberglass. We need the material to do this, so we're gonna go to the store. Let's go! While Valera is walking around the store, I'll talk a little about our idea. Initially, the concept looked like this. We're trying to get closer to this picture. As you can see, it's quite minimalistic. Not so long ago, we made a hood with intricate lights. That's when we've got the idea to do the same thing with a van counter, to install it, bind it with the turn signals, parking and stop lights. A bit of patience, and we're gonna show you what it's gonna look like in real life. Let's get back to the base. First of all, we remove the elements that are already fitted to the body. The next stage is to make this improvised structure, like foam work, for our convenience. This is what it looks like. We're gonna apply the solution to the formwork. The first stage is priming the parts. This is a regular primer, not concentrate, it's diluted, a full cup. This is too much actually but alright. Wow, a strong one. Why do we prime it? To maximize adhesion of the filler. So, here we go. At this stage, we're gonna use this regular construction filler and primer. First of all, because it's water-based and it doesn't dissolve the styrofoam. By the way, this is how styrofoam reacts to the solvent-based liquids. As you can see, we can work with that. The specifications of the filler doesn't matter at this stage, because we use a disposable form, from which we're gonna get the matrix and then threw it away. And of course, the price of it's also good news for us because it's 10 times cheaper than the professional filler for the body repair. That's why Andrew used a lot of it and applies it with a brush. Of course, this material has its advantages and disadvantages. At this stage, the main disadvantage is that it dries too slow, but it's gonna get dry at some point. Andrew perfects the shape again. Then he prepares it for matrix creation. First, he uses alcohol separator, then he applies black gel coat. The matrix of the contour is already dry and now we can separate it already. Well, almost. So, some of it stuck to the form but it fell off because it was very flimsy, made from mud and straw. We need to clean it a little, but all in all the matrix looks great for the contour. I cleaned the form and now I apply the separator. I'm gonna use the alcohol-based one, my favorite. First of all, because I like the smell of it, and second of all, because it's a one-time things, and we need to make just one part. 
The wax separator is used to make a lot of parts from one matrix. We don't need that. This one is cool too, but I prefer alcohol. Our separator is already dry, we're starting to form our parts. The technology is well known, so I won't explain it again. I'll just remind you that we won't use gel, because this part has to be translucent. We're gonna use patterns to make the part, so that the glass fiber mat don't get ripped, which can lead to muddy and less translucent parts. Let's do it! That's right, to get what we're gonna get, the light counter, this part has to be translucent. This means that we need to avoid using black light proof gel coat. Yeah, some processes and their sequence seem illogical to you. You are partially right. If the conditions were perfect, we often face difficulties and we have to wait for some part for weeks. That's why we deal with the task we can deal with at this moment, while some other important things seem to get postponed. So according to this logic, we should just go home, wait for all the part to arrive, to do the whole thing in the right sequence and get back to the workshop after a month or two of doing nothing. That doesn't sound that bad. Actually, but unfortunately, our money printer broke, so we have to adjust to the circumstances. We do what we need to do. I want to remind you that our projects are made for YouTube and solely thanks to your support. Thank you so much for the donations. Thanks to them, we can save our work. If you like what we do and you can support us, the details are in the description of the video. Every dollar will go toward consumables and workshop upkeep so you can see the new series faster. Thanks. So, the parts are shaped and dry. Now we're gonna remove it from the matrix. You can crack them like you crack your joints. Translucent, just what we need. Because it's gonna contain an LED strip and more shiny things. We can use an angle grinder now. Yay! In the end, after a week of work, we made this pile of parts, which we need to connect and install on the van's contour, which is gonna light up. That's why we got a thing about the joints, and the van is gonna have three large parts. One in the center, this one, and the side parts. We need to join these parts somehow, so that the joints are discreet. Now I need to figure out where each part goes, and put them where they belong. We decided not to make a huge single part, because it would be too hard to make. And now we need to think about the joints. You can see here, that it's gonna overlap. That's a problem for us. It's pretty easy to glue the straight parts together. I'm gonna glue them together in the matrix using a thin piece of fiberglass mat. We don't have a 150 piece, so we're gonna rip the 300 in half. I'm gonna put this thin soaked glass mat underneath. We put the parts on top of it. Then I put another short part on top to clamp it. Then we put another piece of soaked glass mat and clamp it again. Have I missed something? Or you didn't he try to stand or jump on that footboard? I have no doubts about the firmness of the structure. Valera did his job well. As I said before, we just put the overlay on the van to show what it looks like. We didn't install them. For obvious reasons, we can't use non-transparent primer, but we need to even the surface. That's why we use transparent acrylic varnish instead of non-transparent. We cover the part with a few layers of it. The next step is to apply the base gray paint. We didn't think about the particular shade, we just used what we had. When we install this part of the vehicle, we're gonna repaint it with the colors from the render. Right now we're painting it roughly just to show you what it's supposed to look like. We've got our U-joint back. They said that everything I did was wrong. 
so they did it again in their own way. We gave them gearbox's flange to do that. They drilled a slot for this flange, replaced the cross pieces, the pipe, but they didn't touch the flat half, so that we can make the U-joint longer or shorter, depending on the back suspension. In the end, we put two LED strips on the van to figure out what it's supposed to look like. I became apparent that we should either make it brighter or to diffuse it. Also, we can check out of the ratio of the body from this point of view. Finally, I really like it. The engine is installed. In the next episode, the DP Labs guys will come here to wire it all up and the van will be basically able to move. So subscribe, like and comment this video. Thank you for watching and catch positive attacks from the axe.